So although NFTs can be implemented on any blockchain that supports smart contract programming, the most noticeable examples are ERC721 and 115 standards on Ethereum. But before we get into both of those, let's just quickly recap what ERC20 is, if you've not heard of it, as it'd be useful for comparison. So it's a well-known standard for creating tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. And some of these examples can be stable coins such as USDT or USDC and DeFi tokens such as Lend and Uni. And really the ERC20 kind of standard allows for creating fungible tokens. So all of the tokens that were just mentioned are completely indistinguishable. And it doesn't matter if we receive USDT, for instance, from our friend or from one of the exchanges, the value of each token is still the same. And to simplify this explanation, we're skipping the possibility of receiving tainted tokens that would actually make a difference between tokens, making them less fungible. But if we look at ERC721, it's a common standard for the creation of NFTs. It allows for creating contracts that can be used to create distinguishable tokens with different properties. A good example of this is the famous Crypto Kitties, a game that allows for collecting and breeding virtual kittens. 115, on the other hand, is the next kind of evolution in the creation of NFTs. This standard allows for creating contracts that support both fungible and non-fungible tokens. It was created by uh, a gaming, a blockchain-based gaming platform known as Engine. And in many games, such as World of Warcraft, uh, as an example, a player can hold both non-fungible items swords, shields, armors, and fungible items such as gold or arrows. So this standard really allows developers uh, to define both fungible and non-fungible tokens and decide how many of these tokens uh, should exist. 